Hello, I'm Joshua Arvin Lat from the University of the Philippines, and I'm here to present the secure online USB login system. We all have online accounts. We store our personal data, private data. We also have online bank accounts. These accounts can be accessed using our username and password. We put a lot of trust in these websites, but unfortunately, the username and password scheme is not secure. Why? Because there are several attacks. They don't even need to have direct access to your computer in order to steal your password. So now, the IT security experts have suggested several available technologies. These include the one, the first one, HTTPS. Unfortunately, despite the cost of these SSL certificates, HTTPS is still prone to keylogger attacks, dictionary attacks, birthday attacks, all kinds of attacks on the password. The second one involves the commercially available security tokens. They do provide good two-factor authentication system. Unfortunately, they require specialized hardware, which is pretty much an easy target because you can easily detect that these are security tokens. In addition to that, these tokens cost a lot of money. Lastly, biometrics, the third one, is very portable, can be secure, unfortunately, it's not consistent. You don't want to use a system which works right now, but later it won't work. And also, it requires very special hardware, and you need really sensitive components and in order to increase the accuracy of the system. And that would cost a lot of money. So now we have a problem when it comes to solving the same problems these technologies are solving. And in addition to that, we need to solve the problems these technologies are experiencing. That's why we present the Soul System. What is the main objective of our research? Our main, the main objective of this research is to transform an ordinary hardware device into a security token. This means that in order to log into your accounts, you just type in the password and then use that physical password in order to log into your accounts. It, it has to be secure, low-cost, practical, invisible, portable, flexible, and consistent. A lot, of object, a lot of objectives. So now, what's the significance of this research project? It means a lot to the online world. Why? Because these problems that millions of users have been facing all of these can be solved by the soul system because the soul system increases the strength of the authentication process and thus crime can be prevented and limited. The opportunities that these hackers have are pretty much less with the soul system. So now you might wonder, how does the soul system change the authentication flow of the, of the username and password scheme? It's pretty much simple. Instead of just typing in the password, you just select the image file stored in the security token. Then you click log in. Pretty much it. Almost similar except for the select the image part. So are you here? Did you, did you get that? Okay. <laughs> Next, how do we attain the objectives we just presented earlier? In order to do that, we, we built and designed a, a system which is composed of three major parts. The first one, the top one, is the it's the, it's the website using the Soul System Software Development Kit. This one, the handshake hands. Uh, this one is the trusted third party which primarily acts as a storage of public keys. You might want to ask, why do we need to store the public keys of these entities? It's simple. We use these public keys for hybrid crypto system. Hybrid crypto system ensures the secure transfer of data from one entity to another. We use that public key to transfer very little amount of data into another entity, that which means that we're going to send the shared key to the other side. This is the case establishment procedure. Now that we have the shared key on both sides, we can now send any amount of data from one entity to another. And that's pretty much what the hybrid crypto system does. Here's my favorite part, the signed Java applet. The signed Java applet is embedded in the websites. The Sign Java applet makes the system very portable. With the Sign Java applet uh, embedded in the website, this means that there, uh, there is no program that needs to be installed in your security token. What's more amazing is that we store data inside images. Remember the presentation of uh, Tatavik earlier, which involves istaganography? 
This system combines the powers of encryption and steganography. We first encrypt the data using the password of the user and then hide the data inside the image file using steganographic techniques. So now you see a very simplified diagram of how the data is transferred from one entity to another. You can see here that the USB program first requests for the public key of the website. That public key is used to transfer the shared key to the other side. Now we can now send a lot, any amount of data from the USB program to the website. So now here's the problem. How do we know that uh, the source is valid? It's simple. We use the private key of the USB program, uh, of the USB flash drive, to sign the data to be transferred to the website. Then the website simply requests the public key of the USB from the trusted third party to verify the integrity of the source. In order for us to achieve our research, we created a cross-language cryptographic library. This library allows secure transfer of data between any two languages. So in our case, so we were able to support uh, Java, Python, PHP. We also created a software development kit which allows the SOL system to be integrated into any website in Java, Python, and PHP. And the trusted third party over here not only acts as a storage of public keys, it also does uh, it, also, it can also become a storage of the hash, file, hash values of the image files so that we can check the integrity of the image files being used. So cloning is not possible. Results. We were able to create, build, design, secure, low-cost, invisible, flexible, portable system. Not only does the system involve the hybrid crypto system, it also makes use of other technologies such as session handling, one-time passwords, it also includes double password hashing, message UUIDs, UUIDs, and other session techniques. It's very portable because no programs are installed inside the security tokens. Uh, it's it's pretty much invisible right? because the hardware token, the hardware device you're using is actually just a normal hardware hardware device, and it contains only ordinary images. So nobody would really suspect that your that your USB flash drive or any container you may use, is actually a security token. And practicality, new in version 5, which you did see in Hong Kong, is the backup key system and the possibility of password change even with two keys. So let me get back to the backup system later. Then here are some results. The most important thing here is that in this image, you see that after steganographic techniques, the, the image still looks the same. Okay, next. How do we fight against known attacks using the soul system? Look, the key logging attack, brute force attack, dictionary attack, and man in the middle attacks are not possible because the soul system involves a hybrid crypto system almost similar to HTTPS, and the system requires a hardware password. So those attacks are not possible. In addition to that, collision attack is not possible because we use collision attack safe. A, fun a function, which is the SHA-512. And replay attacks are not possible because uh, we use one-time passwords during the last part of the login process. And cloning attacks are not possible because the system uses image file has checking every step. Cryptogra cryptography and steganography. We actually tested four possible containers of the user data. We tested in 24-bit bitmap files, tested in PNG files, JPEG files, and even MP3 files. Only these two have been successful in storing a lot of data, in this case, we're planning to have a minimum of 10,000 characters, to store in very little, um, little size pictures. These are really pretty common pictures. Next, the backup key system. Everybody was asking, what if my USB token gets lost? Now, here's your solution. The backup key system allows you to have a maximum of two keys. When one of your keys gets lost, stolen, or corrupted, you can easily just deactivate that using your email address and the other key. Now once, the, now once you have only one key, you can easily create another one, so you have two keys again. Just make sure that the other key is safe, and you can use the other one portably. Optimize hybrid crypto system. This is also new in version 5. You have actually multiplied multiply the speed of the system by two. Conclusion, the design and the implementation of a two-factor authentication system is a success. It's low-cost, flexible, practical, portable, invisible, low-cost, practical. 
And lastly, for those planning to continue our research, uh, they might want to support other languages and provide more plugins and options for the user. Thank you very much, and I hope you were entertained. Thank you, Joshua. Any questions to this? Where can I buy? I want five. Can I buy the one more? Stop! One first! One first! <laughs> The main purpose of this research is to pro provide low cost uh, uh, two factor authentication all around the world. Uh, <laughs> yes. No, it can still be used as a security token because you can use that you see. You can still plug it into uh, into a computer. Yeah. So it and it can store images, right? Uh, regarding Java. Since the system is still not yet uh, out there in the world, still not, once the, 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 the companies making the uh, phones realize that the two-factor authentication is being used everywhere, they will follow yeah, in a matter of years. Uh, thank you for that question. Other questions? Yeah, we'll have. Um, have you tested your, I mean, um, um, your images uh, against programs like uh, Stack Detect or anything to see if they can spot that that image is more than an image? Uh, in order for the, for hackers to make use of Stack Detect and other attacks, uh, they need to steal first the USB flash drive. And steganographic techniques are not really perfect. Uh, the main purpose of steganography in this research is to remove the obviousness of the data being hidden inside the inside the USB flash drive, for example. So you won't be, if, be able to... Uh, that's not possible, really, because any kind of steganographic techniques cannot really prevent stack analysis. And the, but the main purpose of this steganography is to hide the data inside the images, so there would be no installation involved and just image files. So thank you for that question. Other questions? I've read your paper and I see the weak link of the scam is uh, in case uh, if USB token is lost, corrupted or stolen, it means no more access to my data, right? Yes. Mm. But it's not a weak link because you have actually two keys. I said earlier that when one of them is lost, corrupted or stolen, you can easily know, actually an email will be sent if, if, if your account has been accessed outside. Uh, your other key is still there, and you can deactivate the other one if you have the email address. So since you have an email address and your other you key, another you still have two factors instead of one. So the other attacker cannot actually use that other key to deactivate your other account. So you have solved that. Thank you. No more questions? Yes, there we have. Can you give the microphone for me? Well, I still uh, do not catch why you decided to use other uh, steganographic container, uh, PNP and PNG, because uh, uh, JPEG is more, more secure uh, in case of steg analysis and so on. What's the reason? We have actually looked into the JPEG steg steganography. And they use F5 for that. There's a current research. But unfortunately, JPEG files can only store very little amount of data. We can use that if, we, if the user can actually has about 2,000 pixel by 2,000 pixel. We can easily add that. But for convenience, we just use uh, smaller, we, we just wanted to support very small, at least small images. Because JPEG files, uh, the format is pretty much different, and direct storage inside the JPEG files will require very large. Amount of, uh, amount of uh, area. Yeah, for example, if you want to store the same amount of data contained inside 300 pixel PNG, for example, you would need about 2,000 pixel by 2,000 pixel JPEG files. So in this case, unless high definition cameras become pretty common, then JPEG files can be used, uh, can be a storage. We have actually had or originally had JPEG files and MP3 files added. And sorry, but according to the well-known publications on the security of 
GPEX Tegano graffiti is completely the opposite. Completely. What do you mean exact opposite? It is exactly opposite because uh, the, uh, for uh, storing the data in JPEG files, it is uh, necessary less uh, uh, size than for BMP, let's say. And besides that, with BMP, it is so easy to find out that it is something is hidden there. Actually, uh, BMP steganography it is just for the showing that the idea of steganography works, nothing else. Well, we've actually tested storing data inside JPEG files, but and it uses F5, which is a current research which provides more security. And we tested in the data, and we actually had uh, an automated program which calculates the amount of data per size. It actually uh, it is actually in the middle of um, middle size between PNG and 24-bit bitmap and MP3 files. The JPEG file storage actually, yeah, we actually tested that and it, it's kind of weird if it... Okay. I'm sorry, you can continue this argument after the conference, thank you. Uh, very last, very quick question. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Can you explain the um, impossibility of man the middle attack? I think uh, this is uh, the private, key, uh, private and uh, public key, and you can uh, send public key to the resource. Okay, thank you for that. The reason why we put a trusted third party over there is because we wanted to prevent man in the middle attacks. In the original design, in version one, uh, man in the middle attacks are possible. But because it's now in version five and trusted third party uh, is over there now, the signed Java applet already has the public key of the trusted third party, which means that no initial key exchange is being done. So the first step is the encryption of data using the public key of the trusted third party and then sent to the trusted third party. So there's no key exchange and the integrity of the source of the data is safe. Thank you for that question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Treasurer. Thank you very much. from the University of the Philippines. Thank you.